Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. For all integers n greater than or equal to 2, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus dot 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 plus 1 over n is not an integer. No, it is not. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to be using some preliminary results, one of which is as follows. Suppose q is a positive integer, and a1, a2, a3, dot dot dot, a2q is a list of an even number of real numbers. Then, the sum of all those real numbers can be re-expressed as the sum of all the real numbers with an even index plus the sum of all the real numbers with an odd index. For example, if we have a sum of eight real numbers, then we can re-express this as follows. We can re-express it as the sum of the real numbers with an even index plus the sum of the real numbers with an odd index. That's really all that this result is telling us. And another result that we're going to be using is the following. Suppose a, b, and r are positive integers. Then there exist positive integers c and d, such that 2a minus 1 over 2b plus 1 over 2r minus 1 is equal to 2c minus 1 over 2d. So let's prove this result real quick. So let's start off by writing this expression. We're going to show that this expression has this form, where c and d are positive integers. So to do that, let's first combine these two guys into a single fraction. To do that, for the first fraction, we'll multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2r minus 1. As for the second fraction, we'll multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2b. So we have common denominators, so we can add these two fractions together. So we're just going to be adding the numerators. So we get this. But then expanding out the numerator, well, if we expand it out, we're going to get 4ar minus 2a minus 2r plus 1 plus 2b. But then notice, adding 1 is the same thing as adding 2, then subtracting 1. So what we're going to do is, in the numerator, we're going to factor out a 2 from everything except the minus 1. So if we factor out a 2, we're factoring out a 2 from everything except the minus 1. So factoring out a 2, we're going to get 2ar minus a minus r plus 1 plus b. So we get this. And denominator still the same. So taking c to be the expression we have in the parentheses and taking d to be b times 2r minus 1, well then that tells us 2a minus 1 over 2b plus 1 over 2r minus 1 has the form 2c minus 1 all over 2d, which is exactly what we want. And it is in fact true that our choices for C and D here are positive integers, right? That's a little complicated, but they are in fact positive integers. So yeah, this proves star. Another preliminary result that we're going to be using is the following. Suppose a and b are positive integers. Then for all positive integers n, there exist positive integers c and d, such that 2a minus 1 over 2b plus the sum from i equals 1 to m of 1 over 2i minus 1 is equal to 2c minus 1 over 2d. Now to prove star star, we're going to use induction on m. So let's start with the base case. In the base case, we're trying to show that this is true in the case where n is equal to 1. So we're trying to show that there exist positive integers c and d such that 2a minus 1 over 2b plus the sum from i equals 1 to 1 of 1 over 2i minus 1 
is equal to 2c minus 1 over 2d. So, to see how that happens, let's start out by writing this expression, where n is equal to 1. Now, in this sum, all we do is we replace i with 1. So this sum is just equal to 1 over 2 times 1 minus 1. But then, according to star, if we take a to be a, take b to be b, take r to be 1, well then there must exist positive integers c and d such that 2a minus 1 over 2b plus 1 over 2 times 1 minus 1 is equal to 2c minus 1 over 2d. And so we have shown that 2a minus 1 over 2b plus the sum from i equals 1 to 1 of 1 over 2i minus 1 has the form 2c minus 1 over 2d, or c and d are positive integers. So this completes the base case. Now let's move on to the induction step. In the induction step, we give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer m, and we assume that this statement is true for that arbitrary positive integer m. The whole goal of the induction step is to show that this is also true for m plus 1. So we want to show that there exist positive integers, say, c naught and d naught, such that 2a minus 1 all over 2b plus the sum from i equals 1 to m plus 1 of 1 over 2i minus 1 is equal to 2c naught minus 1 all over 2d naught. Right, because we're already working with positive integers c and d. So I'll just give these other positive integers a different name, c naught and d naught. So to do that, well, let's write out this expression, where instead of n, we have n plus 1. So what we're going to do with the sum is we're going to pull away the n plus 1th term. And that will leave us with the sum from i equals 1 to m of 1 over 2i minus 1, plus the m plus 1th term of this sum which is 1 over 2 times n plus 1 minus 1. Now, the sum of these first two guys is equal to 2c minus 1 over 2d by assumption. So we have this. But then we're in a position to apply star. In doing so, we're going to replace a with c. We're going to replace b with d and we're going to replace r with m plus 1. Well, then in that case, there exist positive integers I'll call c naught and d naught, such that 2c minus 1 all over 2d plus 1 over 2 times m plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 2c naught minus 1 all over 2d naught. So in other words, this is equal to 2c naught minus 1 over 2d naught for some positive integers c naught and d naught. So we have shown that 2a minus 1 over 2b plus the sum from i equals 1 to m plus 1 of 1 over 2i minus 1 has the form 2c naught minus 1 over 2d naught, or some positive integers c naught and d naught. And that completes the induction step. So because we've completed both the base case and the induction step, this closes the induction. And so by mathematical induction, we have proven for all positive integers n, this is true. So this proves star star. Okay, so now let's get into proving the main theorem. Now we want to establish for all integers n greater than or equal to 2, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus dot 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 plus 1 over n is not an integer. More specifically, we are going to show that this expression can always be expressed in the form of an odd integer over an even integer, right? That's sort of the theme that we've been looking at here, odd integer over an even integer. That's the claim. We can show that this can be expressed as the ratio of an odd integer to an even integer, um, positive, of course. But that will imply immediately that this expression cannot be an integer. Okay, so by strong induction, we are going to show for all integers n greater than or equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i is equal to 2a minus 1 over 2b for some positive integers a and b.
So let's start with the base case. In the base case, we're trying to show that this is true in the case where n is equal to 2. So we want to show that the sum from i equals 1 to 2 of 1 over i has the form 2a minus 1 over 2b, or some positive integers a and b. Now, the sum from i equals 1 to 2 of 1 over i is just 1 plus 1 half. And 1 plus 1 half is just 3 halves. And we can write 3 as 2 times 2 minus 1. And we can write 2 as 2 times 1. So taking a to be 2 and b to be 1, we're done. So this completes the base case. Now let's move on to the induction step. In the induction step, Let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer n strictly greater than 2. And for the induction hypothesis, we are assuming for all integers k between 2 and n minus 1, we have that this is true. In other words, we are assuming for all integers k such that 2 is less than or equal to k is less than or equal to n minus 1, we have that the sum from i equals 1 to k of 1 over i has this form. The whole goal is to prove that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i has this form. And to prove that, we're going to split this up into two cases. Either n is even or n is odd. In either case, we're going to show that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i has this form. Let's start with the case where n is odd. Well, then n has the form 2r minus 1 for some positive integer r. Now, since n is greater than 2, that implies n minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2, since we're working with integers. So n minus 1 satisfies this inequality. So applying the induction hypothesis to n minus 1, we have the sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over i has the form 2a minus 1 over 2b for some positive integers a and b. Instead, I'm going to call those positive integers s and t, because it doesn't matter what I call them. But now, we can show that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i has this form. And to see how, well, we observe the following. What we're going to do is we're going to pull away the nth term from the sum. So we have sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over i plus 1 over n. But the sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over i is equal to 2s minus 1 over 2t. And n is equal to 2r minus 1. So we have this. But then, by star, if we replace a with s b with t, r with r, we have that there exist positive integers c and d such that 2s minus 1 over 2t plus 1 over 2r minus 1 is equal to 2c minus 1 over 2d. And so this shows that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i has this form. So this completes the case where n is odd. Now let's consider the case where n is even. Well, then n is equal to 2q for some positive integer q. Now, q actually satisfies this inequality. The reason why is because of the following. Since 2 is greater than 1 and q is a positive integer, well, if we multiply q on both sides of this inequality, this implies 2q is greater than q. And actually, 2q is equal to n. And since q is a positive integer, q is greater than or equal to 1. But q actually isn't equal to 1, because what goes wrong if q is equal to 1? If q is equal to 1, then n is equal to 2, which is false because we have n is greater than 2. So we can't have q equal to 1. We must instead have q is strictly greater than 1. So this shows q lies between 1 and n. But since we're working with integers, to say q is less than n is equivalent to saying q is less than or equal to n minus 1. And since q is greater than 1, that's equivalent to saying q is greater than or equal to 2. 
So this shows 2 is less than or equal to q is less than or equal to n minus 1. So q satisfies this inequality. So applying the induction hypothesis to q, we have that the sum from i equals 1 to q of 1 over i has the form 2a minus 1 over 2b for some positive integers a and b. And because I can call those positive integers whatever I want, I'm going to call them s and t again. But now we can actually show that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i has this form. And to see that, we observe the following. First of all, we know n is equal to 2q, so we're going to replace n with 2q. But now we apply our first fact. So all the terms of the sequence are going to be 1, 1 half, 1 third, and so on and so forth up to 1 over 2q. In general, ai is equal to 1 over i. So, applying this fact, the sum from i equals 1 to 2q of 1 over i can be split up into the sum of the terms with even indices plus the sum of the terms with odd indices. Now, from the first sum, we're going to pull out the 1 half. But we know that the sum from i equals 1 to q of 1 over i is equal to 2s minus 1 over 2t. So this is actually just 2s minus 1 over 4t. And now, as you can see, we're in a position to apply star star. In doing so, we're taking a to be s, we're taking b to be 2t, and we're taking m to be q. Well, in that case, there exists positive integers c and d such that 2s minus 1 over 4t plus the sum from i equals 1 to q of 1 over 2i minus 1 is equal to 2c minus 1 over 2d. And this shows that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i has this form. So we're done. We see in either case, whether n is odd or n is even, the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i has this form. So this completes the induction step. So because we've completed both the base case and the induction step, this closes the induction. And so we have proven by strong induction for all integers n greater than or equal to 2, the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i has this form. And from this fact, it immediately follows that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i can't be an integer. Because what happens if the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i is an integer? Well, then what goes wrong here is, if we abbreviate this as hn, well, then we have hn equal to 2a minus 1 over 2b, but then multiplying 2b to the other side, well, hn is an integer. So this tells us we have an even integer equal to an odd integer. But that's absurd because no integer can be both even and odd. So we reach a contradiction. So this is the reason why proving this result proves that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i cannot be an integer. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.